Hi, any physics? It's Mr. Neff. Let's talk about the mirror equation. But before we do, do you know why tiles can't tell jokes? I'll tell you at the end of the video. So we've been drawing the ray diagrams for the spherical mirrors. And I personally think that drawing the ray diagrams is a pretty neat thing. Uh, I think it really helps in determining what kind of images you're going to get, and it, it goes a long way. Uh, but a lot of people are turned off by, number one, how long it takes to draw a ray diagram, and number two, uh, how unprecise of answers it can give you. And so, especially math type people, they'd like to have an equation to do the same kind of thing. And I have an equation for you that will really complement the ray diagrams. Now, I don't want you to totally forget about the ray diagrams, but at the same time, I do want you to be able to get a fast answer and an answer that has a little bit more significant figures. So remember this example we did in the convex mirror video. And we located this, this image of this uh, object that was nine centimeters in front of the particular convex mirror. Well, how could we determine exactly where that is? Or how could we determine it with the right number of significant figures and so forth? Well, what I have here is I have something that is called the mirror equation. The same equation ends up working for lenses too, so it also goes by the name of the lens equation. And I also have a magnification equation. And you can see here the relationship between the focal length, the object distance, and the image distance is this one. One that has the uh, a bunch of reciprocals in there. One over the focal length is one over the DO plus one over the DI. Turns out too, it, and I'll throw it out there right now, that this is also equal to the power of a lens. And if any of you are eyeglass wearers, uh, have contact lenses or anything like this, you have a, a power of a prescription and it is, turns out it is this one over the focal length. All it is to say, this gives you a, a, a relationship between all of those numbers. And so solving one of these is actually really straightforward. At the same time, there's a magnification equation, and the magnification m is the ratio of the height of the image to the height of the object, and you sort of saw that coming. It also turns out it's equal to the ratio of the distance of the image to the distance of the object, but it has a negative in front of it. This is an easy one to remember because it kind of rhymes. Hi-ho, di-do. You just got to remember to have that negative on the die. But it works very well too. And between these two equations, we'll be able to solve something quickly and with a little bit more precision. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back and I drew three ray diagrams for you in these videos. Let's see what the answers uh, are with a little bit more precision, okay? So going back to this one, this one says that, that we had a convex mirror the, Im the image of the object is 18 centimeters behind the mirror. That gave us that focal length of the mirror. And so uh, at that point, I know that since the object was very far away and the image was formed at 18 centimeters behind the mirror, that focal length is negative 18 centimeters. If that's a little fuzzy for you, go back and watch that spherical convex mirrors number one video, and I explain that in there a little bit more and the number two video is not bad either the uh, do is going to be this nine centimeters it's how far in front of the mirror the object is and so i'm going to say that's positive nine centimeters and now i want to find my di i also know that the ho they told me that in this problem was positive three centimeters and I want to find the HI. So here it goes. Let's find the DI first. Well, the DI is inside of this relationship. 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. And so I know that 1 over DI is 1 over F minus 1 over DO. And so I could say that 1 over DI is 1 over negative 18 centimeters minus 1 over 9 centimeters. Now, you probably could, you could certainly do this with your machine, but you can also do this with, the, with a uh, common denominator. There's 1 18th, and here's 2 18ths. So this looks like this is going to come out to negative 3 
18th. Now that's not the answer, that's the reciprocal of the answer. So the di looks like it's going to be negative 18 over 3 centimeters, aka negative 6 centimeters. How do we do when we guessed in the first place? Well, we thought it was something like negative 7 centimeters. So is it a great answer? No, but it's, it's a lot better than most answers. Now, the they wanted to know the HI, and we know that uh, HI over HO is equal to negative DI over DO. And so I can say that uh, HI is equal to negative, negative six centimeters over DO, which was positive nine centimeters, times the HO, which was positive three centimeters. And so I have a negative, a negative here and a negative there are going to cancel each other out. And so six over nine is two over three times three is going to give me two centimeters and it's positive. How did we do in the first place? Hey, we actually we did a pretty nice job on that in the first place. So a DI of negative six and an HI of positive two. One more thing before we leave this example. Those signs will tell you a really lot. When I see a negative on my image distance, I know that that's behind the mirror. So what kind of images are behind the mirror? Virtual ones. And so that means that that's a virtual image. That positive on the HI, that means that that image is upright. Remember, positive things are on this upper side of the principal axis and negative are below it. And so that's going to mean upright. And then at the same time, whenever the um, this was two centimeters compared to our original three centimeters, well, I can say that this is enlarged. Sometimes a problem will ask you, what is the magnification itself? And so if I, if I were asked for the magnification, I might say, well, the HI was positive two, where the HO was positive three, Somebody might say that uh, this is this is not really magnified at all. It's reduced. I agree with that. And this is a reduced image. Oh, I said that was enlarged earlier. Scratch that out, please. Reduced. It's a reduced image, and it's uh, two thirds as big as what the original was. Our next example is a concave mirror. Now, with this one, if you can recall, we had the object inside of the focal point of the mirror, and we ended up with that virtual upright magnified image. We guessed that the image was something like 12 centimeters behind the mirror, and we guessed that the magnification was in the ballpark of two, three centimeters, six centimeters, about twice as big. Let's see if that's really all true. So, in the problem, they tell us that the focal length here is 18 centimeters. And since it's a concave mirror, that focal point is in front of the mirror. And so I know it's a positive 18 centimeters. The object is placed 11 centimeters in front of there. So I know my DO is going to be positive 11 centimeters. They want the DI. And then at the same time, they said that the HO was uh, three centimeters tall, positive three centimeters tall, and they would like to know the HI. Okay, no, no problem. So uh, what do we got here? We have uh, one over the focal length equals one over the DO plus one over the DI. And I might say that one over DI, just like I did last time, is one over F minus one over DO. So uh, 1 over di is going to be 1 over 18 minus 1 over 11 centimeters, centimeters. Now you might say, uh, that's not going to work out very well uh, common denominator wise. I think I'll just go to my machine. And truth is, I think I'm just going to go to my machine too. The machine is going to tell you that this comes out to negative point zero three five three five 
repeating. And when you go ahead and take the reciprocal, you get a di of negative 28.286. Uh, significant figure-wise, only two of those are going to be significant, and that is going to be in centimeters. How do we do in the first place? Yeah, not great, huh? We thought that uh, that this was about 12 centimeters when in reality it should have been a lot bigger than that. And then if we wanted to figure out the height of the image, well, we'll say that the height of the image over the height of the object is negative distance of the image, distance of the object like this. So the height of the image is going to be negative di or negative negative 28.286 centimeters by the do which is positive 11 centimeters and then times the ho which is three centimeters and if we go ahead and put that into the machine we end up getting a 7.714, how about 7.7 .7 centimeters tall? How do we do when we guessed in the first place? We thought six, so this we did a little better job on our picture on the HI than we did on the DI. And then our last example was one where we had a a object outside of even the center of curvature. And so we said, uh, what was the location of this image? Recall that we had a focal length here of five centimeters. We had a DO of 15 centimeters. And we have a DI of unknown. So we're going to say 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. And so I'm going to say 1 over di is 1 over f minus 1 over do. How about 1 over 5 minus 1 over 15. This is Three fifteenths minus one fifteenth is two fifteenths. That's the reciprocal of the answer. So the di looks like it comes out to uh, seven point five centimeters. We said eight centimeters, so that's not bad. And then the magnification is the hi over the ho, or the negative di over do. And so the, the HI is going to be the negative DI, which is negative 7.5 centimeters, by the DO, which is 15 centimeters. You can see something there that the magnification is going to be a negative one half which says that the image is one half as big and it's negative, so it's upside down, inverted. Now I'll multiply by the HO, and the HO was uh, two centimeters. So it looks like this HI is going to be one centimeter, but negative one centimeter because it is inverted. Now, one more thing before we leave this video. Uh, I want to talk about plane mirrors. Now, you wouldn't think I'd be ending the video on curved mirrors and the mirror equation with the plane mirror talk, but it actually the a mirror equation actually applies to plane mirrors too. If you check something out, look at this simulator. If I, Say I take this simulator and I change the center of curvature. Say I make the center of curvature as small as I can. Look maybe from two centimeters up to two centimeters down here. You see that this mirror is really curved, really bowl shaped. And if I make the center farther out, so as the center went from something small to something larger, now look from two centimeters to two centimeters. It's still curved, but it's not as curved. You'd say it was flatter. And this doesn't let me go too, too far. Maybe it'll let me go out to there 
And now look from two centimeters to two centimeters, still curved, but it's flatter yet. And the, so what I'm trying to say is the farther and farther I make that center of curvature, the closer and closer I approach to a flat mirror. So all it is to say that as the mirror gets closer and closer to uh, a, a radius and a focal length of infinity, the mirror gets closer and closer flat. So if I say that I have a flat mirror, I might say that a flat mirror has a focal length that is infinity. Now, if you can remember from our flat mirror video, we just made you uh, agree to something. I just said, well, the image distance and the object's distance are going to be the same size, but I, I didn't necessarily prove that the best. I used a little bit of geometry to make you believe it, but now I think I can make you believe it in a different way. Take a look at this. Here we have a four centimeter object placed 12 centimeters in front of a plane mirror. So I have a plane mirror this time, principal axis is still there, Vert vertex is still here, and I still have distances. And so this is my DO, and they're telling me there that that's 12 centimeters. And I, it says that the object is four centimeters tall. And so there's my HO, and they, again, four centimeters. And they're asking, where's the image formed? How tall is the image? And what is the magnification? Sounds a lot like what we were just doing. Well, where's the image formed? I can use the mirror equation for that. One over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. And as I just got done saying, the focal length on a plane mirror is going to be infinitely large. And so we know what we get when we do one over infinity, that's going to be a zero. And so all that is to say zero is equal to one over DO plus one over DI. Or, if you think about it, that says that 1 over DO is equal to the negative of 1 over DI, and DO is the opposite of DI, which is what we uh, have always been assuming on this, and now we believe it in a different way. So, all that is to say that if the DO is 12 centimeters here, then the DI which you can see in the picture right there, di, that must be a negative 12 centimeters. It's the same size, but it's, it's inside of the mirror, behind the mirror. What about the height of the object? Well, uh, as we said, the magnification is the height of the image over the height of the object or the negative distance of the image over the distance of the object. And so now we can see that the height of the image, well, that's negative di, negative, negative 12 centimeters over the do, which is 12. And we'll divide by, or we'll multiply that by the four centimeter ho, and we're going to get four centimeters for an H on. So it's just as tall. Not just that, but it's also positive. And you can see in a picture that it's positive because it's upright, just like you were when you looked in the mirror last time. Also, you can see here that the magnification is our negative, negative 12 centimeters over our 12 centimeters. And so our magnification is a positive one, meaning that the object's image is as big as the object was itself, and the positive says that it is upright. And so you can see that the mirror equation isn't just for, for spherical mirrors, it's also for plane mirrors too. And do you know why towels can't tell jokes? They have a really dry sense of humor.